Hello, and welcome to this episode of This Week in Tech. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research. I'm joined today by my fellow analyst and member of the Cube Collective community, Joe Peterson. And today, Joe and I are joined by Google Cloud's Bobby Allen and Brendan Royal. Great to see you all. So our conversation today is going to focus on unpacking the new Google Cloud Hugging Face Partnership, which is all about gener uh, all about accelerating Gen AI and ML development, which of course is top of mind for everybody today, right? Um, and so a little bit of backstory here before we dive into our conversation. In early February, Google Cloud and Hugging Face announced a partnership and one that has been touted as really a giant win for the developer community. Um, this partnership gives developers the ability to train and operate Hugging Face models on Google Cloud infrastructure, and this should go a long way toward accelerating Gen, I, uh, Gen AI and ML development. So this new partnership lets developers build, train, and deploy AI models without needing to pay for a Google Cloud subscription. And to me, that's a key part of this alliance here and something I think it'll make it even more incredibly attractive. So outside developers using the Hugging Face platform will have cost-effective access to Google Tens Google's Tensor Processing Units and GPU supercomputers, which will include thousands of NVIDIA's in demand and export restricted H100. So there you go, access to something that is hard to get access to. So before we dive into this conversation, which I know is gonna be a terrific one, uh, Bobby, I know that you've been at Google Cloud for about three years now. Will you tell us a little bit about your career journey and how you ended up here? Sure, Shelley, I'd love to. First, thank you for having me on the program. And uh, secondly, it has been about two and a half, three years. It's been going really, really quickly. Yeah. But I joined Google after 10 years of cloud computing startups. So if you can believe that, I was doing multi-cloud in 2012 and we had no clue what we were doing. It was a mess. <laughs> there was all this new stuff. It was like exciting. It was exhilarating. It was scary. And this feels very similar to that. Before that, I spent time at Bank of America. Before that, I spent time with Intel. And uh, if you look me up on LinkedIn, Shelly, your audience will see that I kind of made up my own title. I call myself a cloud therapist. And I did that because we are making it up as we go along. So I figured, why not make it my own title? I love it. Outside of Google, I'm also a pastor. And so kind of when you hook all those things together, I really like to talk to people. I really like to connect with people. And I really like to try to help people. And so when I think about transformation and technology and all the things that are happening, I want to be the person who wants to listen first. I don't want to just stuff 20 pounds in a five pound bag or make you think I'm the smartest person in the room because I'm usually not. Yeah. I want to be the person that listens to what you're trying to accomplish. And if I can offer something helpful, that's really what I care about. Well, you know, that's how we serve our customers, Bobby. It's not by coming, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like I've had colleagues before who, you know, show up in, in briefing meetings or whatever, and, you know, just pitching, um, always be selling and all that sort of thing. And really, I'm a fan of always be listening. I think that's a great strategy. I try to do that too. Thank you. Brandon? Let's see, I think you've been with Google Cloud for about four years now. Tell us a little four bit about years. your career journey. Yeah, just a little bit longer than Bobby, but not much. Yeah, yeah I've been with yeah. Google Cloud for just about four years, joined in 2020. Uh, I'm a product manager uh, focused on part of our AI infrastructure portfolio, uh, GKE. Um, and really, my background has primarily been in containers, all things containers. You'll, you'll hear me talk a lot about sort of the power of containers. And uh, just before joining Google, uh, I was at a small little startup. Docker uh, helped the you know Microsoft team deliver you know early you know Windows containers capabilities. So I've been sort of very much steeped in all things containers and cloud native infrastructure for a very long time. Uh, but really come more from an application background, more of a developer, uh, just out of school, you know, hands on keyboard, you know, doing doing development. That's what I did, you know, when I in the beginning of my career. And so um, you know, I really like to when I talk to customers about their AI journey. And, how customers are adopting uh, ML, I really take the lens of well, what would a developer do with AI? And, and what, is, what does it mean to infuse AI into development, into applications? So, um, you know, while my recent experience has very much been AI and ML heavy, um, I do take very much of a, a container centric view in helping customers to, uh, you know, to, to go through this journey together. So, yeah. So, you know, super excited to to have the conversation today. Yeah, awesome. Well, you two together are kind of the whole package. 
<laughs> she gets that a lot, Shelly. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, right? Uh, and, and you know what? That's how Joe and I are, too. We laugh about that sometimes because Joe brings, um, you know, Joe brings her engineering brain and her tech analyst brain, and I bring my tech analyst brain and my years of marketing brand strategy focus. And so, you know, a lot of a lot of things like customer behavior and messaging and all those sorts of things are things that I think about. And, you know, she thinks about how things are put together. And so, you know, we make a good pair. So it sounds like you do as well. I like it. I like it. So in case you're not familiar with Hugging Face, it's more, it's one of the more popular AI repositories. Um, it's a platform for viewing, sharing, and showcasing with machine learning models, data sets, um, and related work. Its goal is to make neural language models accessible to anyone building applications powered by machine learning. Um, and I think that, that, you know, kind of a quick summary of the, the services that Hugging Face provides are, you know, um, it hosts an open source pre-trained, it can host open source pre-trained machine learning models. Users get easy access to these models through various environments, for instance, Google Colab or Python virtual environment. Um, pro they provide tools for adjusting machine learning models, an API that offers a user-friendly interface for performing tasks, machine learning related tasks, and then community spaces for collaborating and sharing and showcasing work. So it is a really, um, it is a really awesome platform. And so the, the partnership between the two of you, I think is an exciting news in the industry as a whole. And Joe, I know that you had a little bit of, um, I know that you had a little bit of kind of information on Huggy Face and the Transformer model library, I think that was, that you thought was particularly interesting. Yeah, um, you know, the core of Hugging Face is the Transformers model library, data set library, and the pipeline. So Hugging Face has a library, in case folks don't know this, of 495,000, that's right, I said thousand models. <laughs> and they're grouped, I'm right, crazy. And they're grouped into data types called modalities. Um, so some of the tasks that customers can perform, like you were mentioning, Shelley, our object detection, question answering, summarization, text generation, translation, and text-to-speech. So I think the key here is to have this tool set in a customer's back pocket that really shaves off time to market and helps them leapfrog the competition. And, you know, guys, keep me honest here, but Google Cloud customers are going to be able to deploy Hugging Face models within GKE and Vertex AI. Um, and that's the company's ML platform offering Gemini, which is a multimodal platform from Google DeepMind. And it's expected that the Vertex AI and GKE will be available on the Hugging Face platform in the first half of 2024. Did I say all that right? Did I get that right? right? <laughs> Yeah. You're on track, Joe. Sounds good. All right. All right. I'm just checking. Excellent. So here's what I'm interested in. So, Bobby, this new partnership with Hugging Face, um, you know, it, it's all around making ease, it easier for developers to build and train and deploy AI models in the open ecosystem. This is kind of a big deal for AI development, isn't it? It is, it is, Shelley. So it's a huge deal. And uh, before I go directly into that question, I want to thank you for explaining what Hugging Fakes is because we don't want to leave any of the listeners behind. Yeah. There's so much stuff happening in, in AI right now that I think is really important to get people on ramps because most folks in their day jobs don't have time to keep up with all the thousand announcements that come out every day. So right. thank you for doing that. I want to answer your question, but I want to also put AI in its proper context. Because one of the things that I think is happening is AI is becoming this juncture of all these different things that are happening. So I want to make a statement. Uh, Joe and I have talked about things like this before. I love food analogies, Shelly, to try to explain things very simply. So I have one for you. I'm going to make a statement. I want to give you a visual. And so here's the statement. My statement, Shelly, is that AI is not the thing. AI is the thing that makes the thing better. So let me kind of unpack that. So in terms of what the partnership means, AI, in my opinion, Shelly, is the sauce for the spice that enhances the flavor of the dish is not the dish itself. The dish is the application. And so what does this mean? I think the Google Hugging Face partnership means that essentially the AI cooks, if you will, 
now have access to this huge pantry of spices and sauces. And so as they want to taste and experiment with different applications, they can pull what they want off the shelf and use that to make the application better. That's essentially what it means. I love that analogy. It, what you don't know about me is every minute of every day in my life is spent thinking about my next meal. So that is a wonderful analogy. Thank you. <laughs> you know what some people may have missed in the announcement is that the word application is mentioned no less than five times. Yeah. Uh, focus on the models and the AI, but again, AI has got to be used to enhance, accelerate, or uh, improve an application because that's really where people are going to get value from. Yeah. Absolutely. So Brandon, you know, I'm guessing that you may spend some of your days experimenting with AI and maybe even doing some hands-on development with large language or generative models. Um, what does the Hugging Face Google Cloud partnership mean to you? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. So, you know, maybe I'll take a step back and kind of look at the last 12 months, if you will, right? There's been a unprecedented amount of innovation in AI models and, and couldn't agree more, by the way, with the, with Bobby's point and fantastic analogy there as well about really thinking about applications role in AI. But even if you look in the last 12 months of AI innovation, so much of that innovation has been happening in the open ecosystem and Hugging Face has been a huge player, a big yeah. part of that, that ecosystem in general. Um, and you know, if you, if you follow things like the hugging face leaderboard, as an example, anyone's familiar with that, you might know what I'm talking about. It's essentially a leaderboard of all the top models that are happening. You can see changes of new models every week, you know, new data sets, new research. I mean, this, the pace of innovation is, is absolutely staggering. And so while the imagination, I think of, um, you know, a lot of folks, a lot of the listeners have likely been captured by very powerful models, like, you know, Gemini from Google. And Cloud and you know, Cloud Two and ChatGPT and a number of others. Um, it's really important to call out that a lot of this groundswell of innovation is actually happening in the open with open models and open data, yeah. um, and and that's really really huge. So you know, my background being in open source, you know, this is really an exciting time to be in AI because you have just an amazing access to innovation uh, that's happening out in in the ecosystem. Um, and, you know, a lot of players are, are playing a big role here. Google, of course, is playing a big role in this partnership. We've been very open with models, you know, all the way back to BERT and open research from Google Brain and a bunch of others that sort of led a lot of this innovation. Um, but there are other players um, in the in the ecosystem that are also contributing. If you look at what Meta's done with Llama and Llama 2, yeah. um, that's been been huge in, in uh, creating new uh, models for, for innovation that the community is really, um, you know, ran with. So... I think it's a really exciting time to be in the open ecosystem. Um, and I think from the, you know, the partnership perspective, this gives us, you know, great new opportunities to engage developers, uh, things like, you know, better playgrounds for experimentation. You want to experiment with models. You want to try something out. You have an idea, you want to prototype it quickly. Um, this is going to allow for even easier experimentation with a right. large library of models. Um, it's also going to mean a faster path from prototype to production. And that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. We talk about this in ML all the time. This idea that, you know, data scientists or ML engineers are sort of building these models, um, but they don't deliver value until they're actually in production, until they're actually consumed, right? Or, or they're integrated with an application. Uh, right. at their point. Um, so, so we're really excited about that. You know, we believe we have a great opportunity to serve our customers, to serve the community. Uh, create a, a, a lower friction path to production and, and help uh, developers build their ideas, prototype them, and, and ultimately leverage Google's leading uh, AI infrastructure uh, and, and Kubernetes-based platforms like GKE uh, to help them deliver those production-ready products. Well, and I think the fact that you don't have to be a Google Cloud customer is, you know, is a huge, huge assist that you're providing. You know, I mean... I think the opening the doors and saying everybody's welcome to come and play here in this sandbox, um, that's how you spur innovation. Yeah, experimentation, it's a big part of how these models are becoming so popular. Um, and, you know, we've done things before. If there's some great playgrounds for uh, image generation with, you know, stability, you know, partnership also with stability and stability AI and, and hugging face, so you can actually use uh, TPUs, uh, Google's tensor processing units. 
uh, to to build images really quickly. And that's all in a playground that's completely free to experiment. So it really gives developers the ability just to try things out, to test out their ideas and to build that prototype ultimately faster. Um, and when customers are ready to get uh, to production and start to scale things out using the infrastructure, we're, we're here and we're ready to help them uh, through that journey. Get it. Yep. Well, Bobby, I love your food analogies, of course. Um, so I want to, you know, talk about maybe a different spice cabinet with you. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the uh, Vertex AI product suite. Um, there's 130 prepackaged foundation models. So talk about some spices to choose from. Why is this an important piece of news for developers in particular? I think this is, uh, let's extend the food analogy a little bit, Joe, but also mix in some of the kind of computer stuff. So when I used to go over my grandmother's house and you tell grandma you're working in the cloud, that doesn't mean anything. Baby, can you look at my printer while you're here? Yeah. Because I just think you're a computer person, right? That's like, right. You're a technology generalist, right? Here, fix my remote. Fix yeah, my remote, my remote. <laughs> look at my TV, reprogram my whatever, right? But, mm -hmm. but the reality is there are specializations in technology now, right? And so... What's interesting is that we know that if we think about builders as kind of a comprehensive term, there are developers, there are platform operators, there are infrastructure people. What's nice about this is Vertex allows people to kind of focus on the part of the technology piece that they're experts in. You may be a person who wants to just deal with the stuff above the infrastructure layer, and you want to be able to pull some of those recipes that are already in Vertex or supplement those with some of those open source spices that Brandon talked about in Hugging Face, you can do that without dealing with all the other stuff underneath of that. So typically you'd have to deploy a platform to be able to roll out a model, deploy an application. This kind of keeps you at the level that you want to play at because some developers may not be platform experts or may not have a platform team. Yeah. And so this is exciting because you can stay at the right level, focus on the things that you want to um, play around with and kind of get value from that quickly. So the other way that I would say this show is Vertex comes with a lot of stuff baked in out of the box, right? If you think about something like an air fryer that knows how to heat up pizza or, you know, make chicken nuggets, which is a big fan of my daughters or tater tots, my personal favorite. <laughs> Imagine if you could, if you could pull down another, another type of recipe or another type of action that that air fryer could take. If you could pull down a way for that air fryer to make tacos or to do something else, Vertex is like that preset platform that allows you to do things quickly but now we can learn from hugging face to pull other models off the shelf that could be deployed and managed in vertex you don't have to build an oven to cook a meal yeah, i like it I, yeah it's kind of it's kind of cool um brandon question for you so if i'm getting my information correct there's going to be a similar integration um that we talked about with Vertex AI that's going to roll out for GKE. And again, developers can, you know, conceivably use that service to run AI workloads, such as open models from Hugging Face in containers. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that integration? Did I get that right? And, and then if that did, can you talk to us about that integration? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and as I sort of mentioned in my introduction, um, you know, people typically think of containers and, and Kubernetes in its sort of historical context. And by the way, this year marks 10 years of Kubernetes. So, you know, talk about a battle tested platform that has uh, grown to support just about every workload you could imagine for the cloud and on-prem. And so, you know, I think historically, a lot of these workloads have been sort of thought as, as, as application workloads, but, you know, it turns mm -hmm. out if you actually look at the data, more and more ML workloads are being hosted mm -hmm. and deployed directly in Kubernetes. So, you know, to to Bobby's point earlier about you know folks having different specialties, you know, there are a set of customers and organizations and, and individuals within organizations who really focus on that lower level, that that level of control that's needed for mm -hmm. a lot of specialty workloads. You know, it's the nature of the model, the requirements of the organization clients, you know, data sovereignty, or whatever it happens to be, you know, there are organizations for a number of reasons that want that lower level of control, but they also want the scalability that Kubernetes delivers. And Kubernetes is pretty unique in its ability to efficiently manage 
all kinds of infrastructure and all kinds of different workloads. So now you can start to think of Kubernetes as the orchestrator for your ML models. And you can now orchestrate those ML models, not only over traditional compute, but also across all kinds of different accelerators. So whether those are GPUs, CPUs, or even TPUs, Google's tensor processing units, those can now all be orchestrated using Kubernetes. Um, and you know, for us, it's really exciting, right? Because we can now deliver sort of the Kubernetes experience that we're really proud of, that we're really excited about, um, you know, which is Google Kubernetes engine to those customers. Uh, and really just lower that, that path or lower the uh, sort of friction uh, of deploying those models. Right? We just want to make it super fast and super easy. You, you have a model that's in hugging face. You want to get that thing to production as quickly as you can, but you also want that lower level of control. Uh, so that kind of integration is going to offer that. Um, so, you know, yeah, so we're, we're super excited. And, um, you know, for those of you out there, that are, for listeners that are, you know, maybe thinking, uh, you know, Kubernetes, it's not an ML platform, or maybe containers aren't an ML platform. Mm -hmm. I also want to sort of remind you that containers have been here uh, for ML for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've used, uh, say, a Jupyter Notebook as an example, or, uh, you know, maybe you, you've done some kind of machine learning with like a, you know, a deep learning image, that's likely being served directly from a container. So a lot of this stuff in ML has actually been happening within containers, it's been happening within Kubernetes, and even some of the largest uh, uh, organizations that the largest foundation models that we're all familiar with today, most of those are also being orchestrated with containers. So long story short, you know, containers and Kubernetes is really a battle tested platform for managing uh, AI and ML workloads. And we're really just excited about that hugging face partnership. It just making that easier and easier for customers to deploy those in production while having the control and flexibility and efficiency that they need. You know, I feel like that the, um, the theme song of 2024 is ease of use, simplicity, speed, <laughs> you know, all the things. And, and I think that that's really sort of personifies the industry, certainly the, the four of us work in, right? We all want it fast. And, we, and But I think what we're seeing is that, you know, as the technology space has evolved and, and complexity has risen so much. So any kind of partnerships and any kind of solutions that that brands bring to the table that make complex things less complex, I think is a big deal. And I think we're seeing a lot of that. And, and, I, and I know that customers, that's really important to customers, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, quite popular at the end of each year to do sort of predictions for the next year. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, it was of course no different, right? The number of blog posts yeah. for the four of us have read about yeah. you know, 2024 predictions. Yeah. Um, but that you're right, Shelly, like that was a big one. Yeah. It was all about ease of use. We yeah. know that we now have this huge opportunity to take these AI models and all this innovation and now infuse it into our applications, infuse it into our services, deliver new value and do it in a way that's easy and safe and efficient. Like that's, that's a huge deal. And, and really, I think that's what 2024 is really going to be about. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So I want to, I want to dial in just a second to TPUs and, and so, you know, most folks following AI developments are likely familiar with GPUs being a critical accelerator for AI model training and inference. But this announcement particularly calls out TPUs. And you just spoke mm -hmm. to that just a moment ago. But tell us a little bit more about exactly what a TPU is and why does it matter so much for Hugging Face users who are developing and deploying AI models? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the question. You know, I think you know, first and foremost, Google has had a long-standing partnership with NVIDIA. Um, you know, going back quite a long ways, and, and you know, we're really excited about the GPU capability that we're offering, not only through this partnership, uh, but also just across the entire platform. Uh, you know, leadership and things like uh, you know NVIDIA L4s, we're the first to market uh, with those capabilities. You know, huge investments in H100s and a number of others to make GPUs as easy to consume uh, and powerful to consume within GCP as possible. Yeah. Um, that that said, you know, I think we also have this huge opportunity to leverage a lot of the innovation that's been happening within Google uh, with TPUs. So TPUs, again, are tensor processing units. That's our own custom silicon that we've been building over many years to serve our own machine learning needs. Uh, so, you know, 
Google obviously has a very long standing uh, history of building machine learning, uh, machine learning models, AI. We build it in, into all of our largest products. Uh, and we need specialized infrastructure. We have needed and we continue to need specialized infrastructure in order to serve the unique needs of our AI models. Um, so, you know, we've been bringing that to our customers through what we call cloud TPUs, basically the same infrastructure. We now uh, bring it directly to our customers in, uh, in GCP, uh, giving them the ability to leverage this specialized infrastructure that's really designed for AIs. It was designed for generative AI from day one. Um, so, you know, we really want to you know, make that more accessible to more out customers so they can start to sort of see the power that uh, TPUs can bring to their own AI development. Um, you know, whether it's for price performance, it's really important for them to increase the margins uh, and sort of the economics, if you will, behind their AI models, or whether it's, you know, lightning fast latency, um, you know, whatever it happens to be. We want to make those uh, technologies available to more and more customers. Uh, and so sort of the Hugging Face Partnerships and ability for us to do that, uh, we want to help more and more of those models be uh, sort of compatible with the TPO ecosystem through things like PyTorch XLA, which is something that we continually invest in. Uh, that is basically a, a way of using PyTorch, which is an incredibly popular framework for ML models right. and allowing those models to then run on TPUs. Uh, and of course, lots of investment happening in JAX, which is another framework that's increasingly popular designed by Google, available for TPUs. So, you know, a lot of this investment is really happening in the ecosystem with the mm -hmm. core focus of helping more and more developers uh, build their models and run their models on TPU and really get the most value uh, out of the cloud. So we're really excited about that. Yeah, well, I think with, and, good we, and with good reason. Yeah, I mean, it makes perfect sense. So as we wrap the show, I would love to hear one piece of advice from each one of you on what developers and GCP customers or non-customers should be thinking about as they as they hear about what's possible here and as they kind of prepare to dive in and get started. What's your best advice, Bobby? So my, my best advice, Shelley, is going to be a little bit non-technical for a second. So mm -hmm. I want to leave you with the Bobbyism. I try to leave this insight with folks, just things I've gleaned over the years. And so the short version is technology is the easy part of tech. Yeah. The longer version is tech is the easy part. People are the best part. Behavior is the hard part. Humility is the worst part. And so you may <laughs> not like the fact that someone with the Google shirts admitting that I don't know everything about AI because I don't. So what I did is I hired a smart guy like Brandon and brought him on the program with me. <laughs> when I tried to model Shelly and Joe for the audience says it is really hard for us to know everything about everything. We have yeah, to partner true. with people. We have to work together. Yeah. Maybe someone teaches you about Kubernetes and you teach them about notebooks or other concepts where we can share the knowledge. Like the community aspect of this is what's powerful. And if we mm -hmm. don't embrace the humility of the fact that we can't do it all, know it all, or learn it all, it's an island we're going to struggle. Yeah. And so that's what I hope people get from my part of this, Shelly, is that how smart people like Brandon, if you don't know everything, literally... I'm Brandon's manager, but I learn something from him every week. And I hope it's okay for your audience to hear that. We need to learn from each other. We need to be humble enough to admit that we don't have all the answers. So I would say do that. Don't leave people behind in the rush for technology, right? Remember that people are the best part. And I'll, I'll give you one more kind of hack of Bobbyism, right? We talk about people process technology. Let's get back to people process problem. Who are we making something better for or solving something for? The technology can drown out the people. See someone's face when you're working on that project or exploring that topic. I'm going to make this better for grandma or on so-and-so yeah. or a child or an elderly person. Like make something better for somebody or a person. So that's my advice because that's how we translate Shelly and Joe, these science fair projects into something that will actually make the world better. Yeah, I know. I think that's, uh, I think that's wonderful advice. And uh, I am going to... Uh, fair warning, I'm going to now use that Bobbyism from now until eternity, because that's what I do. Um, but that is wonderful. And, and, you know, I've been working in the digital transformation space, as all of us have for a very long time. And I'm regularly beating the drum that it's not technology alone. It's not the answer. It is 
people and it is processes and it is technology. But I love the way that you morph that. I think that, and, and I love the humility add. I think that all of us really need to not at all be reluctant to admit, I'm not the smartest person in the world. I love learning. I want to be a sponge. And that's really, I think that's the path to success today. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Brandon, what's your piece of advice? Yeah, along the similar lines is don't be afraid to experiment. Mm -hmm. I think if you look back in this, we're in the beginning of this incredibly exciting time that's not unlike however many years ago, Edison and Westinghouse talking about, you know, this electricity thing, it's going to be groundbreaking. Look, we can have a light bulb. Um, how exciting is that? You know, if they had only imagined the different outcomes for electricity that we now completely take for granted today. You know, those early inventors, experimenters, they, they couldn't even imagine that. It's only through iterative experimentation, trying new ideas. Don't be afraid to fail. Throw something out there, see if it sticks. Um, and, and I think we'll be really amazed to see in just five years time uh, what all this foundational work we've all done as an ecosystem. So don't be afraid to experiment and try something new. Great advice. Well, Bobby and Brandon, thanks so much for joining Joe and me today. I knew this was going to be a fascinating conversation and I'm so thrilled that we were able to kind of unpack this and and really show our listening and viewing audience what what this partnership means and 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 hopefully the developer community is excited about this because I think it's a tremendous opportunity to get in and build things and do good things. So with that, we're gonna wrap this week in tech. Thank all three of you for joining us today, and we will see you again next time. Thanks, guys.